everybody, it's Christy back with another video. And this is a video that I meant to make a long time ago, but as we know, I got off track this year a little bit. And so I'm excited to kind of revisit this palette from Lafranc and Bourgeois. It was a Christmas or birthday present. My birthday is five days before Christmas, so it all blurs together after the fact. But it is a palette that I was really looking forward to getting. I'm glad that I got it but it came with some drawbacks that were easy fixes that I just haven't done yet. So here's how we're going to make this a palette that I'm actually gonna get out and paint with and be excited about. First of all, the biggest thing with this palette was the design of the palette itself. It basically fell apart immediately and did not wanna to stay together. These things are flimsy. I don't have a problem with the mixing space, but the actual dividers here in the palette are like pretty useless. Even if I were to glue them in, these paint pans would still move around, which means that I wouldn't use the palette and I haven't used the palette. So that was problem number one that I wanted to address. The way we're gonna address that is with this guy over here. So it's no secret at this point on the channel that Zach from Arts to Embers is one of my favorite people and he designs some of the coolest products out there when it comes to watercolor palette design. Matter of fact, this is a little spoiler, but I just bought some new products from him. They're on their way here, and I'm really excited for that video upcoming, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I bought this palette, I don't know, a long time ago. It is a 24 half pan palette. It is a little bit of a smaller footprint than this palette here, but the design is gonna snap closed. It's not gonna let these paints move around in this palette, and we are actually going to be able to keep everything where it is and paint with it without things sliding around. So that's what I'm gonna do with these paints. I'm gonna put them in here. Now, that would not merit its own video, right? Oh, new palette, that's not it. I'm also going to talk about the paint colors and how we're going to adjust this palette to make it exactly the kind of palette I like to use. So when I swatched these colors forever ago, this is the color selection. Don't look at that down there, that is not Part of the palette that's something I was trying to achieve uh, which was a sap green. This is the color palette and there were a couple things I didn't like about it. I don't love the blue selection in this palette. These two are fine. This one is a Prussian blue that's really weak and I don't love this cerulean blue either. And then I also thought that we had one, two, three, four, five, six browns and we had some sameness going on between these two. Definitely these two especially when we have three other yellows. So my idea was that I'm going to get a few paints to kind of augment this palette to go into here. I'm going to pour them and that's where these De La Rani Aquafines come in because these reminded me a lot of the De La Rani Aquafine paints. However, I can't get these here in tubes. I can't do it. I tried. I can't. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to replace these two blues with De La Rani's Thalo Blue and De La Rani's Prussian Blue, which are colors that I absolutely love from De La Rani. And we are going to remove one of the browns for a sap green, or we're going to remove the white. I might actually just take the white out because the white isn't a pigment at all and leave one of these other colors back in once I swatch. So I am thinking right now that I'm going to pull out the white to put in with the sap green and then replace these two blues. So I'll leave all of these browns for now. I may end up leaving this guy and taking this guy out because this one, I think it's raw sienna. Let's see what is it. Yeah, the raw sienna, it's just, I mean, if I just use a little bit less pigment with this color, it's the same color. This is actually a different color that I wouldn't get otherwise in this palette. So I may keep that one and remove this one and the white might be my plan. So. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this and then I will re swatch the paint set with the new paints in it and show you everything when I am done with it.
done with my new swatches. I have filled my pans and I did end up making even more adjustments at the end. So here's what ended up happening. I didn't use the phthalo blue because I, I don't know why I thought I needed a phthalo blue, but this color is called intense blue, which is another name for phthalo blue. So I don't need a phthalo blue in this palette. I did need the Prussian blue and I'm going to show comparisons in a second and I did need the sap green. So those are the two colors that I ended up keeping. I ended up taking out that one raw umber color and I ended up taking out the replacement for the Prussian blue. Everything else ended up staying in and then I did take a white out and I replaced it with a Derwent Ink Tense white half pan. So if you don't know about uh, this guy right here, the Derwent Ink Tense half pans, they are phenomenal and have amazing coverage. Take a look at how good that white covers. So here we just have a pretty basic swatch, but the colors are vibrant. The color palette is exactly what I want it to be now. It's got um, a nice blue selection, a nice green selection. It's got a nice warm tone selection, a great neutral and landscape and like earth tone selection. So it is everything that I want it to be. Now, I started to glue these down. I stopped here because I wanted to make sure that the swatch was what I wanted it to be before I went and glued them down. I will finish gluing these down. And then once these two dry, I will come back and um, show you exactly how it looks, how it folds, how it stays nice and tight in the actual pan set. So I want to do that. But right now I have wet watercolors in here, so I can't do that. I do want to show these two swatches side by side. So if you take a look here, the main difference is being this Prussian blue. So there is the Lafranc and Bourgeois Prussian blue versus the De La Rani Aquafine Prussian blue, which is one of my favorite Prussian blues. Really, really love it. I really want to get my hands on De La Rani's artist grade paints. They are a little hard to come by here in the United States and they're pricey. So that's going to be something I've got to work on. And then I also, like I said, eliminated this color and I replaced it with this beautiful sap green, which before we were just missing a sap green. We just didn't have one. Now we have one and that makes me pretty happy. So that's where we're at. I am going to do a little piece of art with this as well. And then after that, I will come back once this is all dry in a few days and I will, for you, it'll only be, you know, a few seconds, but for me, it'll be a few days and I will show you the palette closed up and everything. And I'm going to link Zach from Arts to Embers below in case you're interested in his palettes, which I love. I'm also going to try to find pigment information for this set and link it as well, just so that you can know about the pigments and what's in them. And we can learn more about this product together. But right now I'm super excited to get into painting with these paints because they finally have a setup that I can get behind and feels good and feels easy to work with. So let's get to making art.
All right, so let's go ahead and just, I'm gonna show you the paintings I did. We can talk a little bit about the general feelings of this paint and what I discovered when I did a little online looking. So first of all, it moves beautifully. I really enjoy this paint. I think it's easy to work with. It's similar to me to the De La Rani Aquafines in both pigment layout and in terms of just movement and and whatnot. So I would say it's, you know, or like the pretty excellent set of paints from Paul Rubens. So I would say this is an excellent paint set if you have it available to you and can get it affordably. Is it the quality of my professional paints like my Daniel Smith um, or my M. Grahams or my Sennelier's? Probably it is a little bit less good than that. But I will say this website had pigment information and everything seemed above board and very transparent. I'm going to link that all in the comments below. So I just wanted you to kind of know that going in. But look at how nice, I mean, the, the, the ultramarine granulated like a dream for the, the, the sky there and really beautiful fluffy clouds above the water. And then here we were able to get a nice mountain scape with some dimension and then even for florals it really worked nicely and I was able to get different values as well as nice flow and different greens. I really wanted to test the greens to see if there would be a difference between each green and even this green and this green are different and you can visually see that. So I really think it did nice. It mixed well. The white ink pan is a great addition to the set. And so, yeah, I think that if you can get this paint affordably, I think for me on Amazon, and unfortunately, I think the Amazon listing for this paint is gone now, but the listing that I found for it was probably between $30 and, and $40. I, I can't remember because it was gifted to me what it was when I put it on my wish list. But I would say that that's about what I would pay uh, for 24 of these paints and the ones that are listed on the Low Franco Bourgeois website has a sap green. So I think my palette um, not getting the sap green was a, was a mistake. I think that was a mistake. So that is supposed to be in the palette and everything else here is is really, really nice and works really, really well. Do you have these paints? If you're somebody that lives in Europe, maybe you have them and you can tell us a little bit more about them. As far as I know, I had never really experienced this company until I got their gouache from an upcrate and I really liked the gouache and I kind of was like, oh, maybe they have watercolors and that's what led me to finding them. I will say, okay, now I'm ready to do the palette test because everything's dried. So here's the palette. Here's me shaking it upside down and like setting it upside down. And, and the Art Stambers palettes don't come apart. So like all of that going on and then we look back and everything is in place. Nothing has moved. And like I said, you can hear more shaking here because I haven't glued all of these down yet. But the ones that I have glued down are not moving at all. And that is what I am going to do for all of them now that I am happy with the color selection happy with the placement. You could buy stickers and do the same thing. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could pry the paints back up, but I know that this is how I'm gonna use this palette. And now that it's somewhat portable and easy to move with, I really like this paint and I probably will use it more often. So let me know in the comments below if you want me to do any more testing with this paint or if you've used it yourself and what you think about it. And that's gonna be it for me today. I hope that this video inspires you to get out a watercolor set you forgot about and paint something pretty today. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.